since I was a small child, I wanted to be a college professor. And I, I know I picked up from that, you can't have children and be a college professor if you're a woman. But you have to make that choice about foregoing having children. The picture of women's challenges today is very different from what they were 30, 40 years ago. Historically, women faced enormous challenges, stereotypical biases, and impediments to success that seem now to have been dealt with in modern society. Today, in fact, the challenges women are facing have more to do with how to balance career and family and how to live a life that includes children and a pre-tenure existence that isn't just completely hellish. Okay, so uh, my name is Tanka Fitneva and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at Queen's University. Um, I do research on child development and language development and learning. Uh, my husband is also an academic and he is a professor of sociology at Cornell University. When, when there is teaching commitment, we would be together about um, four days a week. So you basically are I'm a single parent for some of the time. And being a single parent when everything is fine, when the kid is in daycare, is fine. Like the, the problems arise when, uh, when something extraordinary happens. Like the kid is sick, um, there is an emergency meeting or a meeting to work goes uh, uh, all the time, then what do you do? Students in the pipeline considering careers in science or in social science get a different message about possibilities for building a career in science or social science depending upon the personal lives that they see that their professors lead. I noticed myself as an undergraduate that none of the female professors had children. Now it's different, but in my own academic department at, at Cornell, all of, the, all, all of the older female faculty, except one, had no children. And she had had her children before she went to graduate school. What my life was before Anya was born, I basically, I would wake up and open my computer and start checking email, email from students, email from colleagues. Hopefully that would be close very quick and start focus on writing for a few hours. Go to work, like do everything that's required. Go back, have dinner, and really until like 10 o'clock or so, just continue working. This is the life that, I mean, many of us in this profession because we love what, we, what we're doing and we don't mind uh, uh, this time commitment. It's just when there is a child in your life, and it's like you can't stretch the time, you, you can't make it, you can't, you can't make it stretch. The years that a woman is, would be establishing a stable marriage and family are exactly the same years that you would be devoting to time in graduate school. And graduate school is very arduous. The worry is intense and I think uh, it was with me, it was with a number of my female colleagues like when, when um, you're having a child, it is, it, it is intense, like how would my productivity be, be affected and, uh, and I do not know a single woman who has said that her productivity has not been affected by having children. The key to me is to figure out how to make graduate work, graduate training and the years of assistant professorships more compatible with um, women's roles. And not just having children, but also being married. What are you supposed to do when you're married? <laughs> One of the things that we're talking about and trying to do something about is strategies that can help women to succeed. And we're finding that strategies that allow women to go on half time when they want to have their children and then segue back to full time later on, or strategies that allow women to share a tenure line with their husband or partner can be very useful. 
In addition, we're finding that universities' more generous leave policies are helpful. And I mean, none of this is surprising. Why would we be surprised that women who have more time away from the office and potentially fewer responsibilities at the office have more time to devote to their children and are consequently happier and more satisfied with their careers? This is completely sensible, but in fact, not that many universities were all that quick to enact these policies. I think that there is a win-win situation for women mothers and for, for their employers. I think women mothers are definitely um, are definitely making choices that, uh, frankly, I I'm so grateful I did not face. I I just am so grateful. I made the choice so long ago I'm comfortable with it, so I don't, I don't envy them. I actually wonder how they do it all, you know, and um, so no, I don't, I don't um, envy them in, in particular. I think mine was a, I think my way was another way. Um, you could become more male-like in the roles that you undertook and, and your behavior and succeed in academics.